Well, good Thursday, guys. Hope you're doing okay. This is a quick update on this really active weather pattern that we're seeing. I mean, check this out. Yes, this looks crazy, right? Maybe some snow for Southeast Canada into the Northeast, and we could be looking at a pretty decent hurricane, at least the potential for development. All right, now take that with a grain of salt. I wanna show you that. That's the GFS, which has a tendency to overdo things, but National Hurricane Center watching this area for some development as we head into the middle part of next week. So something could be there. We're also looking at severe weather today, the potential for some tornadoes. So we're going to talk all about that, and we're going to look at the long range, too, over the next week or so. Let's start in the short term, though. We've got this negatively tilted trough here. That's going to bring severe weather from Minnesota over to Wisconsin late tonight, at really in the afternoon into tonight. Maybe some tornadoes. Storm Prediction Center highlighting this area from the Canadian border all the way down into Oklahoma. I think you got to watch some of these storms. Even down here, there could be some hail with these. The highest tornado risk is going to be up here where you have the strongest wind shear, that change of wind direction with height as those winds veer. And uh, so, yes, so we're looking at Minnesota. It does include Minneapolis, St. Paul, east tonight and eastern Wisconsin as we move through the evening hours. And then as far south, I think maybe even Kansas and Missouri. The further south you go, that wind shear not as strong, but we do have some pretty strong jet stream winds coming through here. That actually could enhance some strong damaging winds. Timing some of this out, and then we'll get to those other things I showed you about. Again, that tropical potential, uh, that tropical risk, and uh, also maybe some cold for the east as we head into October. Still pretty far out. This is Eastern time, by the way, guys. So take an hour off for Central. This is just an idea of how these storms may evolve as we head into the evening and overnight hours. Starting in Minnesota, moving into Wisconsin late tonight, a bit of an easterly, uh, further east view. This is into Wisconsin now. You can see these storms marching east through the evening hours, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, moving uh, east into Wisconsin, and then eventually over toward Madison, toward Green Bay, and then really weakening toward the early morning hours. Some of these may hold some strength, though, so there could be some gusty winds, some run rumbles of thunder through the overnight, and then here's kind of a wider view Looking a bit further to the south, again, watch out here across Iowa, down all the way to Oklahoma, this area here, as this front moves to the east. During those peak heating times uh, this afternoon, could bring some strong damaging winds and some hail. And an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out, but again, that risk, I showed you where that was. Look at this system across the west, still bringing some snow to the higher elevations, some showery conditions across parts of California. That backs off, and then we're watching this next system starting to drop in into parts of British Columbia and Alberta, bringing some snow to the Canadian Rockies. Let's take a look at the east. You know, it's been dry here, I know, for parts of Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, even into the northeast, we've been dry. We've seen quite a bit of rain, though, right, in some areas across North Carolina, not everyone in North Carolina has seen the flooding rains, but we certainly have across eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, a bit of a break here. Maybe a few scattered showers today, and then there comes that next system off to the northwest dropping in. Yes, there will be some snow accumulating across the west, especially across the Rockies over the next couple of days. There's that light snow here in the Sierras, uh, really high up though, and also some snow into parts of Wyoming, Montana, and then north. We talked about that snow up here into uh, parts of western Canada as this system Wraps up here, moves to the east. We're watching that next system diving in from the northwest. That will eventually kind of kick off to the east. There's your trough associated with that. Take a look at the rain if you're trying to find some rain uh, across parts of the Midwest. I think we are in for some wetter times ahead as we head into next week. So the pattern is definitely changing. There's that snow in Colorado we were looking at that accumulating through uh, accumulating through the weekend. And then this area of low pressure here kicks off to the east, sort of a trough here. And then look, some showery conditions as our next storm gets organized. And that could move toward the Great Lakes and bring some, at least some welcome rain to parts of the Midwest, hopefully. Because I know it's been dry in many of these areas. And I've seen your comments, some of you going, what is rain? I've not seen rain in so long. Maybe you'll get some. Now, as we head into the following week, so we are now looking at next Wednesday and Thursday. I will give the GFS some credit. It has consistently said there will be a hurricane or some type of tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Caribbean by the middle part of next week. Again, I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. The National Hurricane Center also watching this area too. But that may move north. And if it does, there could be some problems. I would watch this all along the Gulf Coast next week. And not just here. Also inland, too, because something this strong could bring some flooding rains inland, too. Now, the question is going to be, what's going to be happening in the upper levels? Where, where will our troughs and ridging be by the middle to the end of next week? We're talking about next Saturday and Sunday. 
a long way to get there. That's something that I'll be tracking. But look, this this GFS uh, run has been very aggressive at bringing a strong trough into the east, which would ultimately suck this system north. It's also going to bring in some cold air behind it. All right, I don't know that it's going to play out like this. The GFS has a really hard time at, what, 324 hours out. Yeah, I wouldn't trust anything here. But the idea, though, has been there, at least that idea of a colder pattern here in the east for the 1st of October. And if something is tropical in nature here, it's going to want to either get pulled up the east coast or hopefully not inland, which because that could be uh, could be devastating, it, especially if it moves fast. You could t if you get a hurricane moving inland fast, the faster it moves, the stronger it stays as it moves inland, causing more wind damage. Again, a long time before we get to this point, so we'll be ironing that out over the next couple of weeks, and then we head into October. So if you like this content, hope you'll subscribe, come back. Oh, by the way, if you are wondering what the winter is going to be looking like, I didn't do a complete winter forecast, but here are my thoughts. We already are uh, seeing some of those changes out there. Check it out. I'll see you in that video.